Welcome to the Systems 2000 Accounting Video Training. This section of the video will give you an overview of the accounting software, terminology that is used with the software, and some basic setups that will be needed in order to run the software efficiently. To start with, in terminology, we have the menu tree at the top. By clicking one of the options of the menu tree, you'll see other options and utilities that you can execute. The next section of the screen is called the menu tree. The menu tree has two sections, one banking and the other one posting journals. To activate one of the features in the menu tree, you just need to double click which option you want to go into. Down in the bottom left hand corner, we have the current items. If you're familiar with Windows software, you know that you can minimize a program by clicking the Minimize button and it drops it to your taskbar. But if you're operating within Systems 2000, such as you have a transaction on screen or a customer information on screen, and you want to minimize that, instead of it going down to your taskbar and being cluttered with other options and programs, you will actually put them over here in this easy to find current item. The next section we have is the grid section. This grid section right now is empty, and we'll come back to this later. A grid is similar to an Excel or spreadsheet format, where each one of the fields is an input box that you can type into and sort and group by. Like I said, we will discuss the grid formats and usage of the grids and the filters later on in the videos. When you first enter the system, you'll want to clock in. Do this by clicking on the term Clock In up on the menu bar. A screen will display asking you for your employee number. Enter your employee number and click the OK button. The system will respond telling you the date and time that you're clocked in. Just click OK. You now have a transaction entered into the time clock file that can be read by the Systems 2000 payroll program. This eliminates the need for having an external time clock. Another feature of the clock in and clock out is if I try to clock in a second time, the system is going to warn me that I'm already clocked in and ask me to enter comments. It's based on the premise that if you're trying to clock in more than once, it means that you normally have forgot to clock out. For example, you leave at 5 o'clock at night and you forget to clock out, but you come in the next morning and you hit clock in. The system is going to ask you for comments about when did you actually clock out last or if it was just a double clock in. You could hit cancel. It works in the same manner with clocking out. If I tried to clock out two times consecutively, it's going to think that I just forgot to clock in in the morning. These comments are then transferred over to the payroll system, which helps your payroll clerk know that you are just missing a time punch in the clock in section and they can adjust the payroll time records as needed without having to come ask. The next step that you'll have to do to operate the accounting system is to set up your entities. Entities are a term that Systems 2000 uses for companies or people that either buy or sell from you. Unlike other systems, we have one file. We believe that a entity may be a person or company that both sells to you and buys from you. To set up your entities, go up to the menu bar and click Edit, Modify, and then click the Add Modify Entities feature. The screen will appear showing you a disabled fields. Disabled fields are fields that you cannot enter data in until you click the Add button. As I click the Add button, the fields now become enabled where I can start to type information. You have the option of entering in a company or an individual. Let's enter in demonstration company. As we start typing, at the bottom of the screen a tab appears called duplicates. If I were typing in a last name of Smith, the system would go out there and find everything with Smith. In this case, I can see that I do not have demo company already on file. If it was, as I started to type in DEMO, anything with DEMO at the beginning of the name would have appeared. I can now continue on entering in my information. For the video presentation's sake, 
I am not going to enter in all of the fields. As you get over to the cell phone and the email address, you can see that the labels are printed in blue. If I were to type in a cell phone number, I could click the blue label on cell phone and actually send a text message to that cell phone. Likewise, if I enter in an email address, I could click the email blue label and have that hyperlink right into the email program. This is going to be very useful if you want to email one of your entities, a supplier or customer, and you have them on screen instead of having to go into your email program as you would do now, you could just click the email button and it would automatically launch the email editor. We have many tabs at the bottom of the screen here. From the accounting department, you'll only use two tabs, your AP tab and your AR tab. Let's go to the AP info tab. Here's where we will tell the parameters if we are going to purchase from this, this entity, what terms that we have set up with the, with the supplier. First, we have an account type. Are they an open invoice, a balance forward, or a detail? Open invoices is the most detailed way of purchasing and paying off invoices to a supplier. What this means is that when a supplier sends you an invoice, and let's say the invoice number is 123, when you write the check back to that supplier, you have to tell the system that you're actually paying invoice 123. So if there are 10 invoices for the example of $1 each, I would write a check for $10 and I would tell the system that I am paying for invoice 123, 124, 125, all the way to, you know, 133. On a balance forward system, I don't need to tell the system which invoice I am paying. A balance forward just says, yes, I have 10 invoices to pay. They add up to $10. I'm just going to send a check for $9, and I really don't care what invoices I'm paying. I am just going to pay off my balance. It is up to you as to whether or not you want to set these suppliers up and track them by invoice number or by balance forward. We suggest on your accounts payable that they are set by open invoices and that you actually pay by invoice. Your AP account. Under your company information, you have what we call the default accounts payable account. If this supplier is going to use a different AP account, Let's say that you have accounts payable for parts and service and you have accounts payable for vehicles or for floor plans or whatever the different uh, accounts payable is. In your company information, maybe you have set that your default GL account is 2300, which would be your accounts payable trade. The next field down is the AP account number. This is where you set up what GL account number will be used to handle the accounts payable for this supplier. We'll use 2300 at this point. You can then list up to two additional expense accounts. These account numbers will be used when you're cutting checks. So if you're writing a check for FedEx charges and you wrote the check out for $100, the system would automatically prompt you to use either 2300 or whatever expense account that you have listed here, making it easier for you to write a check and create the correct general ledger entry for it. If you're a Canadian dealer and there is a GST ID number associated with this entity, go ahead and enter it now. The same thing if there is a federal ID number, you can enter it into the field. The last purchase date will be automatically populated by the system along with the totals for last year and year to date. If this is a 1099 customer, just click the 1099 checkbox. You can put in the 1099 full name that you want to appear. And when you decide to run 1099s at the end of the year, where the information that has been applied to this account will appear on the 1099. When you're writing checks, a lot of times it's good to have your billing account number printed pre-printed on the check. You can just type that into the billing account number and it will print for you. You may also have a check memo default. Maybe it's always the rent. So you could type in whatever you want there for your check memo default and that will appear when you print a check. 
If it is a check that you write for the same amount over and over again, possibly for rent using that example, you could type that in for the payment amount default. If this amount that you type in is also a reoccurring auto draft, just check that box and that can set that up to make it easier for you to enter your reoccurring entries into your uh, check register. If there's a particular day that this reoccurring auto draft is going to be taken out, go ahead and enter that information in also. If for some reason you're in a dispute with this entity for payment and you don't want to make any payments and you're the manager but somebody else cuts the check, you can check off the box that says payment hold and that will stop any person from writing a check and approving a check to be sent out to that customer in the check writing section. Many times suppliers will give you terms for paying on time. Enter in the discount amount, normally 2%. And how many days do you have to pay that to get that discount? 10 days. And it's due in 30. If this is a supplier that your parts department is going to use. Check this box here. Otherwise, leave it unchecked. The reason why we have this checkbox is so that your part supplier goes to place an order from his 10 or 15 vendors that he uses. His list is then filtered by only the entities or suppliers that have this checkbox marked as, as yes. If this is a floor plan company, go ahead and check the box for floor plan company. And again, this is for listing purposes. For example, what these checkboxes do is when you have a drop down list, such as a drop down list here. But in this case, it's a drop down list of all of your suppliers. And I'm a parts person. So I want only the suppliers that have been checked to show in my parts department. Likewise, if I checked off the floor plan company, then if I came into a section where I was going to make a floor plan payment or put a vehicle on floor plan and I wanted to select the floor plan company, that drop down list would only show those suppliers that have been checked for floor plan. If this is a bank, I can check is bank and then I can enter in checking account information. So this bank supplies us with loans or supplies us with our checking accounts. We will enter in this information to set up our checks as we hit the add button up here. It allows us to select which GL account number that we will be taking this out of. In this case here we'll say that it's account 1000 and we'll put in the account description. Now this is just for an example. Normally I would create a new entity, such as Bank of Florida, type in the information for their address, and then go say is bank and set up a checking account information. Now that we have this entity set up and all of their accounts payable information has been entered, we also want to go and click on the AR tab, because in this case on our demo company, this supplier is also a customer. They sell us parts, we build things, and we sell those finished goods back to this person for whatever purposes. In this case here, we now have our AR tab. We can do the same thing of saying that we want to track them by open item or by balance forward. That we want to track them by open invoice or by balance forward. And then again, enter in the GL account number that will be applied to this customer when they do purchase something for accounts receivable. We have our sales tax ID number, our GST ID number, and our federal ID numbers. Again, like on the payable tabs, we can see their current accounts receivable balances and even set a credit limit and even put them on credit hold. We can say that whether we want to charge them late fees which is a process that will be done where we can create a late fee on any balances that are past due. If we want to print statements at the end of the month, we can check off that we want this customer to have a statement sent to them. If they are a warranty company, either extended warranty or manufacturer warranty company, go ahead and check those off. And if they are a fixed asset, in other words, we use fixed assets where you can check off a fixed asset and you can type in the description of the asset. So you now have an entity screen here that works for your suppliers, your customers, and your fixed assets. Again, your last purchase date, 
again, their last purchase date, last year's total, and year-to-date totals will all be filled in automatically by the system. On both of these tabs, we have a transaction grid down here at the bottom. Because this is a brand new customer that we're adding, we don't have any transactions in for them. Likewise, on the AP info, there is a grid that would show all of the accounts payable transactions for purchases that we have from this supplier. So again, we have all the information that we need for a customer, supplier, and fixed assets right here on one entity screen. Once we are done, we can click the Save button. And the information is now saved to the entity database. Another feature that you want to be familiar with is the Search button. Clicking Search, I can type in a company name. It just has to be part of the name. And I click the OK button. Down here in the bottom right-hand button above OK, I can say whether I want show only prospects, show suppliers, show customers, show fixed assets. The show only prospects for an accounting clerk is going to show prospects and customers on my search results. As you can see, a grid has appeared. In this grid, I have the option of double-clicking a record selector. These little square boxes to the left of the records are called record selectors. If I double-click it, I will automatically bring up the selected record that I've double-clicked. You don't have to use the mouse to do this. As you can see down here in the bottom section, it is defaulting to a row number. All I have to do is type the row number. If I hit the number 1 and hit Enter, I'm going to get the Systems 2000 entry. As you can see, I'm on my AP Info, and we have Systems 2000 with all of their information and all of the transactions for accounts payable because I'm on the AP tab. If I look at the AR tab, I will see all the AR transactions for this entity. So again, it's just a quick area where we can input information into, it's just a quick area where we can look up information onto this entity. If I go to the Messages tab, I can see all of the emails and messages sent or received from this uh, entity. And if I want to type in a memo about this entity, a demo memo, and save that. That will be notes that can be used for other users in the dealership. If I want to add a quick note to this user, <coughs> if I want to add a quick note to this account, If I want to add a quick note to this uh, entity, just click the Add Quick Note at the bottom. Type in the message. And hit OK. And up here we have a message comment. Notify them that the check has been sent. So you can add notes and information about what needs to be done or going to be done on this. So you can add quick notes to this as reminders or things that you've talked about with customers or suppliers. Another useful, ta uh, another useful feature on this is the Tasks tab. If I want to create a task, I can just click in here and say, need to call for appointment and type in the start date that you want to do that. And then you get a reminder. And you can even assign that task to somebody in your dealership, whether it's yourself or another employee. And that will appear on their email and productivity center. The history tab is very important. You're going to see on our system, the history tab is very important. You'll see this throughout the system where Everything that is done 
every input that is done and saved on an entity or on a transaction is actually recorded. For example, if you look here on the comments of this entity, I am logged in as admin. The old value was blank and the new value is demo memo is what I typed in right here. So if you come in and you see that somebody's address or maybe their AP information has been changed uh, for credit hold or payment hold or whatever and you want to know who did that, simply go to the history tab and put in a search for the name of the field. And we'll go through the searching and filtering options here a little bit later. Just go to the history tab, type in the field name. As I start to type it in, as you can see, and we'll go more in depth into the filter functions of grids, but I typed in COM, and I can see there's where the comments of who typed in those comments. View the list. Takes us back to our search criteria list. So if I were looking for everybody with 2000, I could then just type in or double click and pull up Credit Union 2000 to get the next The view list takes me back to my search results. By clicking the view list, I can now go back and see all of the people, again, that came up when I typed in search for anybody with the word 2000 in their name. And then I can just double click and bring up the other entity. The print button allows me to print the information and The print button at the bottom is used for CRM purposes in the sales department, which will take us to a reporting feature for printing off a prospect sheet. We're going to go ahead and exit out and go back to the accounting system. This section we're going to discuss setting up your chart of accounts. We do this by clicking the Edit, Modify, and Add Modify GL Accounts on the menu bar at the top of the screen. The Add Modify GL Accounts screen has three sections. To the left is the grid showing all of the accounts listed in our chart of accounts. The top right is the account information. And we have the transactions and the GL departmental splits that are associated with this account. First, the grid. We can expand the size of a column just like on an Excel spreadsheet, by placing our mouse in between the two columns and clicking and holding the left mouse key. If I want to filter for a specific account, I just start to type the account. What's left over is one account, and I click on it, and I have that account. The same thing applies to a description. Clicking on it, and the information appears to the right. If I want to add a new account, I come down to the Add button and I click Add. I could type in a prefix, base, and suffix for the account number. If you're just using a standard chart of accounts, you can just type in the base, ignoring prefix and suffix. Type in a description. If you're using System 2000 to do accounting for multiple companies, you can decide whether that this account number is only going to be used for a particular company or you can leave it blank and when you go in to post an entry for company one or company two this account number will be a valid account number for either one of those companies. You then have to select an account type. Is it an accounts payable, accounts receivable, a standard asset, is it a checking account, a clearing account, equity expense, so forth. These account types determine where this account's balance is going to appear. Will it appear on a balance sheet or on a profit and loss? 
the sales tax field is used to determine if this account is going to be displayed on your sales tax reports. Normally, all revenue accounts will be picked up on the sales tax reports. If this were selected as a revenue account, but we did not want it to appear on the sales tax report, I would click it as exclude as revenue. There are certain accounts that are this type, such as internal sales, parts that were sold to the service department. You record those as a sale for the parts department, but it's not really a sale that needs to be reported to your state revenue department. So you want that excluded. In other cases, you may have an account number that is set as an expense, such as freight expense. That freight expense might be something that you have also billed out to a customer. Certain dealers will bill freight to a customer, but they'll charge that freight uh, they've collected as revenue right back to an expense account. In this case here, that freight revenue may have been shown as an expense, and you'd want to include that as revenue onto your chart of accounts. And then if this were a sales tax payable, which is a liability, this tells the system that this account needs to be included as the amount that's going to be due to the state for payment. We have some options here for check boxes. Do you wish to track unit counts? And clicking this, every time that you make an entry, it will count that you can either modify on the entry. We'll go into more on tracking of unit counts. The internal statement bucket is a bucket number that you apply to a report that is a dealer 20 group statement. We'll go more into that in depth in the reporting section later on. Likewise, the external statement bucket number is used for Excel spreadsheets where you want to get very elaborate. You can actually tell the system to export this data to a specific location on an Excel spreadsheet. Again, we'll go more in depth on the external statement. The external account number is used by companies that are a division or are reporting to headquarters. So you will have a chart of account that maybe account 7,000 is something that is internal, but headquarters wants that all lumped into an account number, possibly 2,300. So by typing in an external account number, you can generate a report that says 7,000, 7,001, and 7,002 all get lumped into account 2,300 for corporate. It also has another useful feature that if you have changed the GL accounts on your system, you can type in the old account number for the external account. And when you're posting an entry, if you were to type in 2300, the computer doesn't find 2300 on file. It automatically checks the external account number says 7000 used to be 2300 and automatically puts in 7,000 on the posting screen. This is very useful in fact where you remember what the new account numbers are. The default profit center. Every transaction that comes in is assigned to a profit center. Now if you just have one lot, you, all of your GL accounts and transactions will probably coming into one profit center, which in this case here we have profit, a, profit centers A through D. But if you have multiple lots, and you want to run a report based on a location, you would set up each location as a designation. Now there's a place that we will set these up for our demo purposes. We just use A, B, and C. You could actually say Orlando, Miami, Jacksonville, or 0102 based on the location. Whatever that you want to find your profit centers. But if a transaction were coming into this GL account number, you can set up what we call a default profit center. So if it wasn't specified at the time the transaction was created that it was coming from location one, it could hit this DL account number and would go under that profit center. Likewise, default departments. You could set up your departments and add more you know, or change the names of these departments here or delete some. The next three checkboxes here are very important. The require entity, require stock number, and require comments dictate to the user posting an entry into accounting that they are going to be required to give additional information to that entry. 
For example, I am doing an entry to an accounts receivable general ledger account. I type in the fact that it is entry of $100 debit to my accounts receivable account. I would want to have this checked as require the entity. The entity is who charged that $100 to their account. The system will not let me out of the entry without putting the customer number or supplier number that is assigned to that transaction. On my unit inventory, if I'm entering a transaction where I have purchased a vehicle, I want to make sure that I enter in the stock number that's been assigned to that vehicle. So if this were an account type of a new vehicle, I would want to make sure that I required the stock number on that entry. And then you have comments. There are certain transactions that you may want somebody to always fill a comment in. Every time that a transaction is posted to the account that is displayed up here in this section, in the top section, that transaction will be displayed down here in this grid. For example, we will go ahead and we'll save this transaction here. Let's find a transaction such as cash in bank. Under cash in bank, every entry that users are doing throughout the system that are in the current month are showing up on this screen. This is only for quick reference. Do not think that you're going to have to come to this screen to see transactions. We're going to get into how you look up transactions. This is just a helpful tool when you're in this screen and making some modifications. Departmental splits. If this account number is going to be automatically split to different departments. For example, rent. Let's pull up our rent account. This is our rent expense, and we're going to go into departmental splits. In this case here, we want to split this account, 780, between two departments. So any transaction that gets posted to rent, the system will automatically split by the percentages that we entered in. If I wanted to, I could actually change the account number, that it could go to two different account numbers. I could split it amongst different profit centers, different departments, and set up my different percentages. What this allows you to do is when a rent expense comes in or any other expense or charge that you want split amongst different departments or profit centers, all you have to do is just type in the full amount. So if you have a check for rent for $15,000 for the month, you type in $15,000 and the computer automatically breaks that $15,000 and creates the entries to all the different departments for you. Once you have set up your chart of accounts, it's possible that you're going to come by some accounts that are outdated as, as years go by. At that case, you'd want to mark an account as inactive. The only way to mark an account as inactive is if it has a zero balance. In this case here, you cannot mark an account inactive if the account has a balance. Since this account has a balance of $99 down here, it will not allow me to mark it inactive. Once it is inactive and I save the record, I can come back later and view any accounts that were marked as inactive. When I click this, if they had been inactive, they would be displayed over here in the left-hand grid. There are times where you want to set budgets for certain expenses or even projected revenues. To set up the budgets, click Add Modify Budgets. Type in the account number, what company you want to set the budget for, and then type in the budget for each month. By setting up these budgets, you will then be able to get reports that will compare your current values to your budgets and also giving you a variance on your P&Ls. If you're using the Systems 2000 accounting module for multiple companies, it will prompt you to select which company you would like to post entries into. Hit the drop-down list and then select your company and click OK. In the event that once you're in the accounting system and you would like to change the company at that time, click on the menu bar under File, Change Working Company. The system will prompt you with the message box asking for which company you'd like to switch to. Select the company and click OK. Before you begin doing daily tasks in the accounting system, you want to ensure that your transactions are going to be posted to the correct month. We can do this by going to File 
and change month and year. The month and year that is displayed on the pop-up window is the current month that is set in the company information. The last month closed out was month 7 and thus the company information says the current month is month 8. We may be posting in month 9 because we have not closed out the current month associated with the company information. In this case we will just switch from month 8 to month 9 and all transactions that we post today will be posted into month